Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be looking at some historic bottoms for Bitcoin, and we're going to look at some of the moving averages in order, in order to identify when those bottoms occurred. Now, if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we're going to look at something that, I mean, of course, it's it's dubious at best. I, I'm not asking you to take it to the bank because we all know they're not going to cash it in. But one of the things we can do is first, let's look at the price of Bitcoin and recognize there's a lot of noise here. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna get rid of the noise. All right. So we have <laughs> we have a nice a nice blank screen. Now what we're gonna do is we're just simply gonna look at the 20 week and the 100 week SMA. That's all we're gonna do, right? A fairly, a fairly simple exercise, uh, fairly easy to do. And what you'll notice if you drown out the noise and you just look at say like the 20 week SMA and the 100 week SMA, what you'll notice is that there are two times in history, only two times where the 20 week SMA cross below the 100 week. Okay, exhibit A and exhibit B, two times in history where the 20 week SMA went below the 100 week moving average. And you might wonder, you know, why does this matter? Who really cares, right? They're just moving averages, they're lagging indicators, blah, 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 right? And I kind of agree with you. But let us look to see, was there any significance to the crossing of these two moving averages. Perhaps we'll add in our noise. Hmm. What's interesting is that in history, both times that the 20 week moving average crossed below the 100 week moving average, it marked the bottom. Okay. That's what marked the bottom. Now, again, as I said at the beginning, if you try to take this to the bank and cash it in, they're going to laugh at you. Okay, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. We do know that these things are, as I said before, dubious at best. But the reason why this is some, somewhat interesting is because if you look at, at where we were previously, when we went into this sort of phase, you can see that we were between the 100 week and the 20 week, right? Between them. And then it was that last capitulation below the 100 week moving average. It was another 40, 50% drop over here. That's what led into the accumulation phase for the next move higher. In the same manner, this move here, you can see that also marked the bottom, right? Before the accumulation phase for the next move higher. Now, this isn't all so easy all the time. There are times where it comes where they come close to crossing, but they don't actually quite make it there. For instance, if you look and say the middle of 2019, 2020, it seemed like they were going to cross again, but they didn't. They sort of just stayed right above one another. And if you also sort of extrapolate the 100 week SMA out here, you could argue that they never would have crossed over here either. Okay. So certainly they do not always cross. What we are saying is historically, whenever they have crossed, it ended up marking the bottom. Why is this important? Does anyone really care? Well, I think it's somewhat interesting from the, from the perspective of saying, well, we are in, in some danger here of them crossing yet again. If you're curious where the 100 week is, it's currently sitting at around 36.3K and the 20 week SMA is at 41.3K. So again, we're getting squeezed here between a rock and a hard place. And so the question is, is will the 20 week cross below the 100 week? If it does, historically speaking, that actually ended up marking the bottom, even if it was another 40% drop or something, but that's historically what ended up marking the bottom. Uh, at least looking at it in this manner. Now, are they going to cross anytime soon? Well, not in May, right? Not in, more than likely not going to happen in May. Uh, it's probably going to be a little, a little bit of time here before they actually cross. If we were to extrapolate out their current trends, which is probably not a good thing to do, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. If you extrapolate out, extrapolate out their current trend and say, let's suppose that they keep moving at the same rate they are, then it would have them crossing in late June or maybe early July. However, there's something we need to take in consideration here, and that's if you go 20 weeks back, uh, sooner rather than later, we're going to start ignoring prices up here and, and, and start, if, especially if the price of Bitcoin holds at these levels, like let's suppose, I mean, this is our sixth red week. I mean, we've had five in a row for sure. This could be number six. Let's suppose Bitcoin bounces off of some level over here. If it comes back up this way, 
um, then, then you're basically going to be replacing prices down here with maybe prices up here, in which case the 20-week SME might actually start going back up again. So sometimes it, it seems like it's simple to, to just sort of extrapolate these moving averages, but since they are a function of future prices to come, it's hard to get an exact count or an exact extrapolation of when exactly they are going to cross. If the price of Bitcoin continues down in the short term, and we do get that lower low that we've talked about in the past, one of the things I've mentioned before to be on the lookout for uh, when looking at, say, the daily the, the daily time frame especially, but I'll just draw it on the weekly, is Bitcoin putting in these higher lows. And then if the floor falls out, we know that we know that all Bitcoin valuations can, can take a pretty big hit. And so we're sort of we're sort of looking at, at something similar now is if if we fall below these levels, we know that all Bitcoin valuations can take a pretty big hit fairly quickly. OK, so you need to keep that in mind. And maybe I'll draw that out a little bit more clearly on the daily time frame here in a minute. But when looking at this, we do know, historically speaking, the cross of the 20 week SMA and the 100 week SMA did historically mark bottoms. This was December of 2018. And then in um, uh D January of, of 2015 and that was more or less the bottom for both of those for both of those moves now the other thing I, I wanted to mention here when looking at this chart is to go back to the daily time frame and and talk about the fact that the Bitcoin was rejected off the 200 day in the same manner that it was in 2018 look I'm not here to say things have to play out the same way but we're also not going to sit here and not look at, at somewhat obvious comparisons between these two moves. And so I, I do think it's important to follow this. The, the main reason, so I need to look at the 200 day, that's the 100 day. The, the main reason is because we're, we're still putting in like a low, higher low, rejection off the 200 day, higher low, and then we fell below and then back up to the 200 day. And you can see that same pattern playing out again, right? Low, higher low, rejection off the 200 day, technically a higher low, but if we fall below it, then we could be putting in a lower low, so something like this. And then if it goes back up to the 200 day, you'd be talking about going back up to 40 to $42,000 at the 200 day moving average sometime in June or July. So that's why I'm saying, you know, there's no clear, there's no clear way to know if the 20 week will cross the, 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 the 100 week in, let's say June or July, because if Bitcoin bounces back up, and we're replacing weekly closes over here with weekly closes up here, then it might be the 20 week SMA goes up for a little bit or at least levels off for a few weeks. And then in that case, you might actually see the cross happening sometime in like, let's say August or September or something, if, if the Bitcoin price continues to, to remain stuck, stuck in traffic on Struggle Street. So that's where we currently are today. I, I thought this was a unique way to, to look at the market, to just look at the, the 20 week and the 100 week to remove the noise and to just say, you know what? Historically, when these things cross, it has meant something. Will it mean something again? If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. You'll get access to weekly reports and videos, the Telegram Alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, the Risk dashboard, and more. So make sure you check it out. See you guys next time. Bye.